so it's the morning and we are heading um, to Pool Harbour. Very exciting. There's little like, it looks like windows in this rock right here. So that's very cool. There's the needles coming up. Last night we saw this lighthouse going, it was really, really cool. And we stayed up yeah. and watched the sunset, which is nice. One's been bricked up, hasn't it? Yeah. How many needles are there? They're called the five fingers, them rocks. Yeah. There isn't five anymore, is there? One, two, three. One, two, three. I think there was one there. I think there might have been, yeah. I guess one day they'll they'll all go. Wait, so these aren't the needles? Yeah, yeah these are the needles, yeah. yeah. Oh, but they're called the five it's fingers. The rocks are isn't it? That's what I'd say. Yeah, eventually. At one point, this would have been a whole... The cliff would have come right, right yeah. out. It would have been the rest of the... Well, eventually, just wearing it away. So I just wanted to let you guys know I have my own point. It's over there. St. Catherine's Point. Yay! We, um, we managed to get to Pool Harbour, but we came in and the water went so shallow. I think it was like um, 0.2 of a metre. We have um, a deep key a deep keel um a two meter keel it didn't work out so we couldn't stay there um, we found about four different marinas um no one um had any spaces for us so we just decided to anchor off um by loads of cliffs it's like we love cliffs now but this is our second night on anchor but we don't know whether we're going to stay here or not because it's really really windy i'm really really tired out from packing the sails and putting them in and putting them back out. Oh, some of us felt a bit uh, seasick on the way. Me and my dad didn't, but my mum did because she's got a little bit of travel sickness. Wasn't that bad and um, she's all right now, just if you're asking. Um, did you know, um, there used to be five needles, but like, um, if you saw, um, um, like before, like a couple minutes ago on this video, um, there was like only four and if you saw there was like a little stub on in between two big ones um two big needles so we were thinking that was maybe there the four fifth needles there maybe also um did you know the famous harry redknapp actually lives just on this beach over here we obviously don't know which house it is but we were guessing it's quite a big one but yeah he lives somewhere over Hi guys, yes, that's right, I'm in Pool Harbour. <laughs> so excited. Um, so, the reason why we're in Pool Harbour is, um, as you saw earlier, in um, like, for us it was about an hour ago when we had tea, me and my mum felt sick, so we asked our dad if we could move. He said yes, um, so we had a look at, we came into Pool Harbour and um, there, um, we had a look for any mooring boys. There wasn't any mooring boys, which was, oh, which was sad. But so we decided we were going um, to anchor up. We found a little anchorage right behind me. I don't know if you can see this because the sun's kind of bright. But um, it's really pretty. So we've landed on Brownsy Island, which is very nice. There's quite a few um, kayaks landed on the shore as well, but one of the things to be wary of is the access to the island. A lot of the steps have collapsed, so you're actually much further to sort of the southwest of the island to actually get on. Yeah. That's usually there. Yeah. Look. Lovely view. That's a good shot, isn't it? Look at that. 
You can see that other island if you come over here. Come over there. That's where we try to anchor at the very back of that island, but it's just too shallow. Over here. Yes, yeah, so you have to go all the way around the channel here. You can see the marks right the way around to the other side. Then you come back out a little bit and then you tuck back in again, but it's it's, it's very, very shallow. Mm -hmm. If you're in the channel, it's fine, but come out of it just even a tiny bit and it just falls away. Whoa, did you hear that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Some jobs are fake and by men serving in the war were filled by women. Post women perform the same duties as post men despite the additional strain of harder labour and longer hours. They were employed to deliver parcels by bicycle and became drivers for the vans, clearing the pillar boxes. Women did all the jobs that required brownsies to function normally, such as powering, harvesting, guarding, and milking the cows. Some of Brownsie's workforce was to find employment in men's roles on the main road. Mabel Toms became a postwoman during the war and her sister Rose worked as a tram driver. In the absence of our estate men, the women of Brownsie formed their own land army. Well done. Yeah. That's what we've seen. Oh, yeah. 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 I think this, this is, is the farm here. This is where we are. There's a church, look. And then we can see that, that's the front that we can see. Where have we parked? We're moored, we're moored off here. No, where it's our dinghy. Oh, it's on this side here. So our dinghy's about there, maybe. We're here at the moment. Yeah. Karen walking down here to the church, and we can walk back down, visit the centre and back round. So you can actually moor up on this side of the island as well. This bit here looks quite deep. But they're the only two places, really. Yeah, but it's very busy down here. I don't think you can get in there. There's some so small craft moorings on that side, but I think that's basically it. Yeah. Oh, that's where the pottery was made. That's all the pottery that you're finding on the... Uh, beach. On the beach, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we found oh, some pottery on the beach. Weird. Imagine these guys here, didn't they? Oh, Yeah. 